fans, Susan Singari with another edition of the Must Love MMA Show, where each week we bring you the most interesting stories from around the fight globe. Because, of course, every fighter has a story. This week, I'm really excited to bring to you part two of my interview with the king of cartoons and MMA, Tommy Toehold. Tommy, how are you? I'm doing very well. You're so kind. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tommy. Tommy, you know, one of the things that people often ask me about is how you came up with the name of Tommy Toehold. So I've got to ask that for all the fans out there. Well, originally, I wanted to name him Tommy Toughnuts. Um, I've, I've, <laughs> I've always used that, that term as sort of like a fake tough guy. And my initial concept of the character was going to be that he was sort of this, um, you know, MMA dude bro type guy, uh, real puffed up muscles, but all talk and, and no fire. Uh, however, that name was already taken. Somebody on YouTube was already named Tommy Toughnuts. I know, right? So I thought, ah, well... And I thought, okay, I used to be an English teacher. I want to use some alliteration here. What MMA-related term could I use that starts with a T? And Toehold came to mind, and I thought, Tommy Toehold. That is absolutely perfect. Okay, so Tommy, tell me a little bit more about how you first got into the MMA game, so to speak, because you don't practice MMA, yet you have this crazy alter ego cartoon boy called Tommy Toehold. Yeah, so uh, what happened was, uh, when it, it started when I was in high school, um, and I had a friend who was really into MMA, so this is like early 2000s, so you're talking like, you know, Tito Ortiz era, uh, Randy Couture, Matt Hughes, all those guys, right, and uh, he was so into it, it got me interested, you know, I'd seen some of it as a child, uh, you know, sort of like the early UFC, like VHS rentals and stuff, uh, but it I, I really got me fascinated, and uh, my friend, uh, I, I don't want to name him because I don't want to uh, out anything about myself. Uh, in terms of location or anything like that, but he ended up fighting in the UFC. So this guy was oh, wow, really into cool. it. Yeah, so he ended up uh, as a fighter as well, so I was really, really into it at that point, and then and, and through college. And uh, I was that guy that was like, I had to get every pay-per-view, and I, I'm watching all these different shows that I could, and uh, I just became obsessed with the sport. But it was sort of just a hobby. It was just sort of fun. It was what I did when I wasn't teaching or coaching football. And... Uh, and then I finally took the leap with, with Tommy Dole. But again, I didn't really think that I would be working in the industry. I just thought, oh, I'm right, going to make this because right. it's funny to me. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm working in the industry and, and people know who I am. And I just thought, wow, this is not what I expected. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, if I, I got to thank my friend because had he not really been into it in high school, maybe I, I wouldn't have uh, discovered it. But um, yeah, that's sort of how it all started. That's a cool story. That's a very cool story. So who is your favorite fighter and why? Ooh, that's like, it's so funny because when I watch the fights, uh, I don't really normally care who wins. Uh, unless I personally know a fighter. Tommy. I know, right? And I, I, I think people hate that about me because like I'm so neutral on Twitter. Because I'm like, I just, I don't care who wins. But unless I like know them personally or whatever, then I'm like, Oh yeah, I hope they win just because they're a friend of mine. Uh, but, but my favorite fighter is probably Joe Lozon. Um, uh, one, cool. he's a great guy. I've gotten to know him, but two, uh, he's just like a fighter's fighter, right? He's, he's the type mm -hmm. of fighter mm -hmm. that blood and guts all the way. And he's just so, he was so exciting. So dynamic. He's so fun to watch. So uh, Joe has, has been a longtime favorite of mine and uh, probably always will be my favorite. Now, we've discussed this before, but I want our viewers to really kind of get a better impression as to sort of your daily life over before you started Tommy Toehold and, and how you were working in a completely non-related field and how this came about. So talk to us a little bit again about how you made the transition from well, I thought you were an art Great. teacher, but uh, uh, now I find out you're an English teacher, which <laughs> means that you're even more creative. How did you make the transition from um, from English teacher, and were you teaching high school kids or elementary kids into the MMA cartoon world, so to speak, and the creation of Tommy Toehold? Yeah, I was, I was a high school English teacher, so I was teaching uh, freshmen and sophomores, uh, mainly. I, I think I had a couple of classes that were juniors. But, yeah, it was one of those things where – uh, I had uh, gone to college, and I was coaching in college, 
um, uh, immediately because I, I, I really wanted to stick with football. It was, a, it was definitely a passion of mine. So uh, probably my sophomore year of college, I was already trying to help coach uh, you know, high school football at the high school that I went to. Uh, and so at that time, I still hadn't really picked a career, and I thought, you know what, uh, this makes the most sense. I'm going to be a teacher. So I became an English teacher. <laughs> uh, I ended up working at the same school that I was coaching at, the same school wow. I went to. Yeah, I know, right? Crazy. Um, but honestly, it w- it's so wild that these things happen this way, because had I not been laid off, had they not gotten rid of the younger teachers that were, that were working at the high school, I probably never would have even bothered to make Tommy because I didn't think Tommy was going to be a, I, I had known that there, there were people that made cool. careers off of YouTube that made their, their livings off of it. But I never imagined that that, that could be something that would be possible, especially uh, in the MMA field, because MMA is, is such a niche market. Right. So I thought, right, there's exactly. no way this is going to happen. And so I kind of just did it for fun. And when it started taking off and I, and I, it's all money coming, and I thought, I might actually right be able now, to do this let's take a look. for a living. And then now, I mean, I, I, I can't even believe how much I have made compared to what I was doing before. And I I could, I mean, I, I love teaching, don't get me wrong, and maybe I will go back to that someday. I'm sure Tommy Toehold won't last forever, but uh, this is such an incredible ride, and I just, I, I feel so grateful every single day that I get to do this. It's pretty crazy. It's like I'm living in a dream. We don't want Tommy Toho to go anywhere. We think he's going to have many chapters. And speaking of many <laughs> chapters, I'm curious to find out if Tommy Toho was going to have a girlfriend, who would it be and why? Oh, my goodness. That is a good <laughs> – no, it's funny. I, I was <laughs> – when I first started the character, uh, I would jokingly – anytime I talked about going away, I would say I was going on a date with Jessica Rabbit. Uh, that was always oh, the Tommy Toehold. Yeah, that was always my go-to. So I think I think that's the kind of uh, the kind of gal Tommy would be involved with if he was uh, if he was going to have a girlfriend. What are some of the things that would surprise us about Tommy Toehold? Things we don't know. Does he have a secret talent? Uh, any of those kind of things? Does he like to cook? Anything that would surprise our viewers about Tommy Toehold? Ooh, uh, I can sing. Um, that's probably oh. something that most people wouldn't expect, especially <laughs> with my uh, awful sounding Tommy Tohold voice. Uh, most people would assume I could not. However, yeah, I used to, uh, when I was really young, uh, I went to a, a private Catholic school and it was pretty much required to be in the choir. You didn't have a choice. Um, but it turned out that I was pretty good at singing. And I ended up staying in that choir for many years, uh, all the way up into high school. And then after that, uh, I was obsessed with karaoke. I would go to karaoke bars oh, all the time in the summer of my, yeah, uh, when I was a teacher that the, the summer uh, before and after every single uh, week, I would go to this one uh, karaoke bar to try to win their $50 competition for some extra spending money. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that would be something that would surprise people that I can, I can sing a few tunes. So I've mapped out the next couple of years for Tommy. He's going to marry Jessica, and somebody's going to sing at the wedding, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you like to do in your free time? Right. Doesn't sound like you spend. I mean, you sound just like me. You know, my my MMA stuff is a is is all encompassing. I know you're a workaholic. I'm a workaholic. It doesn't feel like work, but when you have free time, what do you like to do? Oh yeah, definitely. No, you you nailed it. There's there's definitely not a lot, but when there is. Uh, I like to spend time with my family. Um, that's that's pretty much. Uh, I'm not I'm not married or anything like that. But my, you know, my brothers and and uh, my parents when I get a chance to. Uh, but it's uh, that's probably what I would do the most when I'm not working. Uh, is, is see all of them. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really I enjoy, enjoy video games uh, from time to time. Um, I work out because I have to. I don't do it for fun. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I would say it's hanging out with family. That sounds like a good time to me when I'm not working. What inspires you, Tommy? Ooh, lots of stuff. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a really, that's a deep, I have to like, think about that one. Um, I, I would say I've had a lot of things that inspire me. Uh, and they they kind of come from all sorts of different fields and, and areas. 
Um, I, I get inspired by some of the athletes in the sport that do incredible mm-hmm. things. And I sort of uh, channel that energy into what I'm doing. You know, when I see somebody like, uh, you know, a Conor McGregor, who's doing all these ridiculous things. And I think, wow, maybe I can, you know, be ridiculous as well. Or uh, I definitely get inspired by comedy as well. If I see a really funny right. comedy, I'll think, ah, oh, God, that was a great joke. Like, I wish I could write something like that. Um, I know anytime I watch Modern Family, I'm always like, you know what? I, those freaking writers are geniuses. Like, how in the world did they come up with that? And that'll usually get my creative juices flowing and, and, and get me moving. So I would definitely say I'm inspired a lot by uh, the comedy that I watch. And then and just the people in this industry. There's so many ambitious people, whether they're fighters or in the media or, or anything. There's so many people just hustling their asses off uh, in, yeah. in this sport. And it really, it, uh, it definitely keeps me motivated and keeps me going. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I find that over the years interviewing different people in different areas, entertainment and sports, the MMA community is small. It's growing. It is a niche. But I have to agree with you that so many of the people I've met, from fighters to managers to Tommy Toehold to trainers to just about everybody, everybody is really very accommodating. And, and one of the reasons why I too tried to get into working with um, and doing an MMA report is that I felt people were being misrepresented. You know, people were thinking yeah. that MMA fighters were these kind of brawny, and this is, gosh, before Ronda, Ronda sorry, Ronda, this goes back to before we even had females, I felt like they were being sort of misrepresented and, and they were all looking sort of like, you know, trashy, so to speak, MMA fighters with tattoos. So the, the MMA community is amazing. Oh, wait, before we go today, I got to ask you, we got a question from a fan. Tom wants to know, and it's a good question, Tom, thank you. He wants to know, how close are you to signing a deal with ESPN? Oh my goodness! Um, you can, may not be able to say. <laughs> I, I am, <laughs> no, no, I uh, no full full disclosure. There's I have not talked to them at all. Um, to be quite honest with you, yeah, I uh, obviously I'm I'm still working with Fox. I still have a Fox contract, and yeah, I mean I don't know. I personally, my thoughts on this. Obviously, everyone knows the UFC is switching over to ESPN mm-hmm. uh, at the end mm-hmm. of the year. Um, I don't believe that. Disney, who owns ESPN, would ever want to be in the Tommy to hold business. That's my personal opinion. You know, you've, you've got like Disney princesses, Toy Story, and then Tommy to hold. I don't know. This one of those things doesn't fit. Uh, and, and I think it's Tommy. And I'm okay with that, to be quite honest with you. I don't, I don't really, uh, uh, I think my, my relationship with Fox, it made, it makes sense. It's, it's a good fit. Right. Um, right. The way ESPN does their programming, I don't really know if Tommy would have a home. So that's that's my opinion on it. But yeah, to, to answer his question, I've actually not talked with him at all. So, well, I think it's as long as the fans know that Tommy Toehold is going nowhere except to marry Jessica Rabbit and sing <laughs> and sing at the wedding, then I think we're okay. Before we go today, Tommy, tell us anything you would like to say. Shout out to a fan or, or, or your social media handles or anything else you want to add, please, sir. Oh, no, thank you so much. Uh, and again, thank you again for having me on the show. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. Some really awesome questions and some stuff that made me think. And, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody that's, that's watched this uh, Tommy to hold business for all these years now. It's been six years. I can't even believe it. And, uh, yeah, what a wild ride. Thank you guys all so much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, plenty more to come. Uh, I definitely don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So, uh, But, yeah, social media, uh, Twitter at Tommy Toehold, YouTube.com slash Tommy Toehold, and Facebook.com slash Tommy Toehold. So you can check me out there. And uh, thank you again so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tommy. And before we go, I want to thank my Must Love MMA fans for watching. If you have a story suggestion, a comment, even a rant, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And yeah, it's me, not my staff who really reads them late at night, sometimes too. You can follow me on Twitter at Susan Singari, at Instagram at Susan Singari MMA, and also on my Facebook page at Susan Singari MLMMA. Tommy Toehold, an honor, a pleasure. I'm humbled to be in the company of a creative genius, and I so very much look forward to seeing the rest of the cartoons and the continuing story of Tommy Toehold. Thank you so much. You're so kind.